Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to my shop. Oh, today's coffee cup, it says, I don't intend to do anything today. And so far, I'm on schedule. So, all I can say is it's great to be retired. I'm really enjoying it. So, the reason I'm out here today, though, is I wanted to show you a new idea I have for a push stick. If you remember back to my original video, it was about the gripper. And it's where I took an NMP gripper, as I called it, no moving parts. And I made it. It's just a push pad with abrasive on it and preset grooves so that depending upon which way you put it and the distance your fence is from the blade, it will go in between on the groove so that you never tear up the bottom of your surface. I did an original video on these two. And these are the original ones. I finally retired them. So I hung them up there like you would a pair of baby shoes. But I have those there to remind me. And then I made these. And these two have actually worked out very nicely. I like this better than the original set. Uh, they've worked out real well. And this one I've got grooved. This one I haven't bothered grooving yet. Because uh, I haven't had to do any hand over hand. But as you can see, it works just as good every time because I'm not tearing it up in there. I'm always using the preset groove and if you remember go back and watch the video you can see how that no matter where I put my fence as long as I'm more than a quarter inch away from the fence with the blade I can line this up in the black area and that's the direction I want to turn it. If it hits the blade I would turn it around and now it would be in the black again. Uh, go watch that video and you know what I'm talking about. Well this works great when you're doing certain size pieces and i mean something like this this one if it's over an inch and a half because this is about three inches wide so when you're less than three less than an inch and a half wide so if i wanted to cut this piece or this piece instead if i set my fence to seven eighths of an inch and if i cut this piece i would use this gripper set it up check which direction i want it to go Set everything up, and now I would push it through. But, instead of that piece, let's say I want to cut this piece or this piece. Well, the problem with these is my gripper kind of teeters on there. My center of gravity of the handle isn't really directly over. So I have to do this a little differently, especially the more narrow the piece is like this, the harder this can be. So, what do you do? Instead of using my gripper, I've been turning to one of these. It has a heel on it and much narrower so I can get right over the piece and be able to hold it without it teetering. So if I wanted to cut this piece in here, I put it in there, I set the height to where I want the height to be, less than a quarter inch above the piece, and then I take my push pad and I push it through. The problem is this one, it will actually cut a groove in there. And so you're gonna be tearing this up. And eventually it will look like that. We've all seen this, we all have had it. I've replaced the heel on this several times. And I've actually, this used to be four and a half inches wide and I've little by little cut it away to give me a new surface. And I've used this for a long time. Well, it's now narrow enough that these screws that hold it on here, um, I'd be afraid if I cut any more, it might actually hit those screws. So it's time to retire this thing. So that's why I made this one. But I got to thinking about it, and I'm just gonna tear this one up like I did that one. So I decided that this gripper, the NMP gripper, is great for pieces if you're above a, an inch and a half wide. Doesn't matter how far from the blade you are. If you're less than three inches from the blade, this is what you want to use. But if you're between an inch and a half or less on the width of the board you're cutting, this doesn't work very well. That's why I would go to this. So, I finally decided that rather than tearing something up like this all the time, I actually made what I call the flipper gripper. And this is it here. Basically, it's a heel on it so that you can hook the piece and it has a groove setting here and here 
so that this one works on the same principle as this one does for setting it up for the width of the blade. So if I wanted to cut this piece now, this is too wide, so I would turn to this. And then what I do is after I set my height and my fence, now I take my flipper gripper and I set it here and against the fence and slide it up next to the blade. The heel is up when I look at this. And right now it's hitting the flat spot. It's not in the groove. So if I flip it around, now I hold it up to the blade. The blade is actually in the groove. So that means that this is the surface I want to be on top of my piece that I'm cutting. So I just flip it down. And now I make note of whether I'm using this surface or this surface to push with. I took on this heel, on one end I blackened it in. The other end is still natural color. And the reason I did that is that once I determine which face I want to use, I then flip it down and I make note of whether the black is up or down. Here it's up, here it's down. I need the black up to make this cut with the fence this far away from the blade. So I put my piece there, I take the heel, black up, set this up against there, put it up against my piece, and now that I'm ready, I can then turn my saw on and run my blade through and push that through and have total control over it without tearing up my gripping pad. If instead of this piece, I want to do this piece, so I open up my fence to make a cut. Let's say I want to just skim this one. So I set my fence to where I want it, set my height, so, so that it's just above the surface. Now I take my gripper. Instantly take, hold it up to here and take a look at it. Right here, if I hold it against the fence and against the blade, I can see it's actually hitting this leg. So if I flip it around, now it's in the groove. So that means that I flip it down, black up. So I cut this piece with black up. So now, anytime I use it while the fence is here, I know this is the way I want to hold this. Set it over my piece, hook it on the end, have it up against my fence like you do would with any gripper. And now I push this one through, and this one then is cut. And I did not damage my gripper. So this will never end up looking like this. And this is my new gripper. Now, let's talk about how I did this. And I know what you're thinking. But these actually, they're magical. So I put a little magic on them so that when I put it down, it always lines up in the groove. Okay, it's not really magic, it's math. But you don't have to do any math. Just like with the other gripper, I showed you how to make that. Pretty straightforward. Let me show you how you make this one. No magic involved. So you take this, and you take a piece of wood, and I would use hardwood. I did this out of MDF, but I would make it out of hardwood for a multitude of reasons. So you take this piece, it's three quarters of an inch by two inches, and this is six inches long, so I would do a 12 inch piece. And you cut two dados into one surface. You come in a quarter inch from this edge, and cut a quarter inch dado. Then you move over a half inch, and you cut a half inch dado here. So you end up with a dado a half inch here and a quarter inch dado here, which gives you a quarter inch leg here, half inch leg here, and a half inch leg here. And you mount the two. Then I took and I put a groove on the back side of my 12 inch piece, a dado, so that I can put the center piece into those dados. So I can put this all together and glue it up. Then you cut this piece in half, so you got two six inch pieces and you glue them onto your centerpiece. Your centerpiece, you can make it any way you want. I left a little relief hole here, even though I grabbed mine right underneath the lip. If you got a real big hand, you might like to have those finger reliefs. That's up to you. And the height here, that's up to you too. I did mine based on my fence, so no matter how small that piece of wood is, if I have to, my fingers will actually reach in through the hole. The fence won't stop me from being able to grab this thing. Um, so I can control it while I'm using it. On the heel, you blacken one end of the heel 
It's two inches wide, just like this board, and it's a half inch longer than this is from here to here, the overall width. So this is four and a half inches, this is five inches, and I got a quarter inch hangover for the heel then on this piece here. This piece, you do want to make this out of hardboard instead of plywood like I did. And I just screwed it on there so if I ever have to, for some reason, I can replace this with another push pad if I have to. And this gives me everything I need and I will never have this thing end up looking like this. Quick and easy, simple to use. You just set your fence where you want it. When you get it set, lock it down, set your height, take your gripper, your flipper gripper, and hold it against the fence, slide it up to your blade. It's hitting the leg, means that I turn it around. Now when I bring it up, it's in the groove. I flip it down, black down, so with the blade this far from the fence, I use this with the black down to push my pieces through. It's that simple. So, uh, hopefully this showed you how to make it. If you can think outside the box like you're supposed to, don't forget, OTB Thinker. And if you think outside the box, I've given you more than enough information to make your own. So, go back, make your own MMP gripper, make your flipper gripper, and 99% of the time, this is all you're going to use. If it's wider than the three inches that this one uses, at that point, I tend to just use my hands to put it through. Uh, my hands are far enough away at that point that I'm comfortable using just my hands to push it through. You can have a wider gripper if you want. That's up to you. Do it to what makes you comfortable. When it's less than three inches, down to an inch and a half, I use this. If the blade is less than an inch and a half from the fence, then I turn to this. Very simple. And if it's less than a quarter inch, which is what this is, and this is, is a quarter inch from the edge. So if I'm less than a quarter inch, if I use either one of these, it will tear it up. So if you're less than a quarter inch, you have to make a decision. Do I want to make a special push pad, which you can do? I could do it with something like this. Make these up, nothing flat, and then you can use them until they get cut up. Cut the edge off and start over. And use this and just cut it away as you chew it up along the edge. Or flip your board around, move your fence away, so you're cutting the edge on the outside edge of the board instead of on the inside. So, there's lots of ways you can do this different. If you are less than a quarter inch, you just have to redo it. But if you're more than a quarter inch away on your blade from your fence, these will do the job for you. And if it's further than either one of these, then you can even go and do it the way you want. Once in a great while, I actually still use this, but I find myself not really using this, hardly any, since I made both of these. So I, I challenge you, make the NMP gripper, make the flipper gripper, try them for a week and see if you don't like them. If you don't, throw them away. And leave me a comment. Let me know that you didn't like it and what you didn't like about it. If you think they can be better, tell me that. I'd love to hear it. So, but give it a try. Flipper gripper and MP gripper. That's probably 90% of all you'll need when you're cutting wood on your table saw. So, I want to thank you for stopping by. Please leave comments and ideas down below. I read them all. If you like this video, say so. Most importantly, though, please come back again because we're nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you again very soon.